How's it going everybody? This is Cheech with Fly Fish Food and we have a really cool fly to show you today. This is a fly that's been around Utah for lots of years, 20 plus years. A guy named Robert Williamson came up, came up with and it's a really creative fly with a pretty innovative foam style body. Um, I've been playing with that with a lot of different techniques so watch this one and you'll check it out. Does that work, Brig? And you'll check it out? Yeah, they will. If they watch it, they'll check it out. Just watch the video. Dude, that's a big brown bro. Okay, this fly is super cool. A lot of people who have fished around Utah know what this one is. Who have been on some of the old forums. This is a twisted foam hopper created by a dude named Robert Williamson back in the day. He's got a book, I think it's like called like Creative Fly Tying or something, but anyway, find the book by Robert Williamson, you'll be able to see this fly. Um, so this is a really cool technique. I hadn't played with it for 20 years, and so I started messing around with it the other day, and I've been having a blast with it. So I've kind of modified some of the, the steps to this fly. Um, I think his fly, you know, he had a hand-twisted body, um, the, the bullet head was, you know, kind of poked a hole through and pushed it over. I do mine a little bit differently and then a, a deer hair wing. But at the end of the day, you're going to want to have a fly with that kind of profile on the bottom. So I'll show you my adaptation of the Robert Williamson Twisted Foam Hopper. And if you want to check out the kicked up version, uh, it's called Hoptimus Prime. I, I just used the body and we switched everything out. Um, it's a cool fly. The cool thing is, um, if you have materials for one, you have materials for both. So give them both a try. Um, I'm going to start with some 6 aught thread. I think this is Semperfly. Anything in the kind of the 140 denier flavor would, will work. I don't know why I did this first, but I uh, got all my foam ready and trimmed it. So I'm uh, just going to build up a little bit of a base. If you have kind of a rougher edge here with your thread, um, your fly is less likely to slip around the shank. So I'm going to go about back to here um, because I'm going to tie in um, the, the head, the bullet head for the fly a little bit further back. So I'll tie it in here, work my thread back just a little bit. And back on the back I want to do looser wraps because I'm going to put a lot of pressure on that foam. All right, so once we're here, um, I think the way Robert would do it is he would take foam and twist it up with his fingers and it would furl on top of itself and you can make a body like that. I like to add taper into the body of this and there's a way to do it. I, I do know that this does push some of the air out of the body, but it still works, it still floats. So I'm going to just take all four of these after they're tied in and twist them up. You're going to create a lot of pressure right here. So. It, what I do is I take my hands and I just stroke the, the whole group of, of uh, foam back. This is fettuccine foam. Um, but as you stroke down kind of like a, a dubbing noodle, if you will, it smooths everything out and creates this really cool, it almost looks like candy. I've had to keep Brig away from my desk all day. And you can come back in with your finger like this and adjust the, the diameter. So I'm going to keep just sliding my fingers down as I keep twisting and you'll kind of see it just twist everything up nice and tight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab it about right here because that's how long I want this to be and I'm going to lightly roll my fingers as I furl it on top of itself. It's all It all kind of happens fast so watch. And if I do that and release the tension as I go forward it kind of automatically goes into this nice conical shape. So there's still air in the foam up here, back by, back here by the tip, it's really, really tight. So we'll tie that in, pull this forward, and we'll give that the old trimaroo. And uh, at this point, for the original, you tie in some deer hair. I'm gonna just use this um, ultra dry yarn from Fulling Mill. I think I have four strands of it and I'm going to just tie it in in front of that foam, take my thread up the foam, pull it back over the foam, and then right back 
where I started. This wing I want to be about a little bit longer than the body, so that's how we'll trim it and it will kind of all lay back and stay in shape as soon as we put this head on. Um, before I do the head, I do want to tack a little bit of super glue in here to see it just have it penetrate before there gets to be a whole bunch of stuff right here. All right, so I've taken a piece of two mil foam and I've cut it roughly the width of the gap of the hook, maybe just a touch longer. So I'm gonna turn the fly upside down or if you don't have a rotary vise, you're just going to tie in the, the first piece of foam on the bottom. So I've taken my thread, I put it right behind the eye, and I'm going to take this piece of foam and I want to put it about right here where the edge of this stops, but on the bottom side. So I'll find that, and I'm going to use a technique called pre-pinching, so I'm going to pinch the foam in place so my thread doesn't have to do as much work, and then my thread just kind of grabs the foam and it's a nice tight tie down. And it spins when you try to show the good people on the YouTubes. Alright, so as you can see, I've bound that down really nice and tight. Sometimes this will roll a little bit. That's not a big deal. It's pretty easy to overcome when you tie the other piece in. So, I'm going to take the same piece of foam. I'm going to trim it like this. Boom. And then I'm going to push this up like this when I get the fly done. And so, the, the hook always tries to poke there. So, I've started just taking my scissors and making a little incision. You're gonna turn it into pants. Look, these are the hopper pants. Oh man. Brig, it's amazing that people watch these videos with all this crap, all right? Okay, so same thing, thread close by the eye. I'm gonna push my thread right back to where that wing starts, pre-pinch that, and cinch it down. Lock it down like the Raiders corners don't do. Lock it down like Josh McDaniels doesn't do in game. Sorry, I'm a bitter Raiders fan right now, my bad. Okay, so once we have that head all, all nice and ready to get wrapped, um, I'm gonna take more super glue. Just coat that whole head because we're gonna smash this down to make a flat head on it. And there's a technique I'll show you. So first things first, thread where I want it. I'm going to take this piece of foam. See how that, see a little uh, hopper pant slide up over the hook point like that. Nothing gets snagged. Two nice and easy turns. This one, same deal. Couple of turns and we're in. Make sure it's nice and straight and then smash that head together. The super glue will even glue the side shut so you have a nice, cool, flat head. It'll sit a little better in the water that way. And then I'm going to come in here and trim this top piece off. Straight across the top. Bottom piece. Let's do this. I'm going to just trim into those little pants. Very minimal bulk on the bottom, has a V shape because of the little pants we made. And we just need to put legs and an indicator on. There's a little, cool little hack with the indicator. So, um, pretty simple, um, just one set of legs. They will eat this just like a hopper with a, with a bent leg. What I just did is I noticed there was some super glue still in that head, so that will stick to the leg. I just wiped that out there with my, with my finger. A couple turns and that, that leg should sit just nice in that gap. And that will give it a perfect 45 degree angle off the hook. Trim that and we will add an indicator to this, which is more of the ultra dry yarn, but in pink this time. I'm going to tie it in like this, and I like to take a needle and just push that forward, lay it down, flay it splays out nice, looks good, adds a little bit of bulk up there, and it ever so slightly angles that back, and then I'm going to cut this one at an angle just like that. All right, and to finish this one off, I'm just going to come in between that indicator, tag it with some super glue. 
and then just run my thread right through that and trim it on the other side of the indicator. For the legs, just push them all forward and trim them all the same length. There you have it. Let me trim that down a little bit. The twisted foam hopper. Um, super easy to tie. Floats great. It's a durable fly. And uh, once you start twisting this foam up, it's pretty addicting.